They will be called Oaks of Righteousness on display for his splendor. I could just pray before we start. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, your grace, your mercy, your truth. Uh, God, I just pray that you open our eyes, our minds, our, our ears, our hearts to you and everything you want to teach us tonight. God, let us not miss something because um, we tune out, Father God. But I pray that all distractions in our hearts and our minds and from this week, Father God, and from these months and the, the, the beginning of this year, God, I pray that it doesn't distract us present right now, God, in your presence, Father. And I pray that uh, we leave here differently, Father God, and that everything that happens tonight, let it be your will, let it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, man, first of all, thank you, Jill, for allowing me to share my uh, experience um, in the past month, a, couple, a month and a half ago. Uh, so my name is Darius Walker. Uh, I'm not from Wakanda. I'm from the city of Rochester, New York. I'm a senior at Wagner College in New York City. Um, I study sociology with a minor in civic engagement, and I love Jesus a lot. And um, yeah, I'm here to share, man. I feel like tonight is uh, it's not so much about this experience that I have, man. It's about, it's a call of faith tonight, I believe. I believe that tonight is, is calling us 
to move from walking by sight, walking by our feelings and emotions, to walking by faith, as God calls us to as Christians, as Christ followers. Um, so I'll be talking about uh, my experience in Botswana, uh, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, and I went to South Africa as well. Um, so if you can play that video that's highlighted, um, I'm gonna turn it up. Botswana. The people of the land is Botswana, or one person of the land is Mutswana. They speak Setswana, and that is really cool, actually. Remember that? Chip. So yeah, so I went to Mutswana, um, and they speak they speak Setswana. So if I am to say hi to you, I would say Dumela, and if I'm talking to a man, I would say Dumela Ra or Dumela Ma is for women. A lot of respect. Uh, so Dumela. Um, or if I'm speaking as a group, it's Dumelang, right? So Dumelang. Um, so yeah, so Botswana is Southern Africa, and um, they got their independence um, in 19, hold on, I wrote it down in my notes when I was there. Um, So, so yeah, so they got their independence, I believe, in 1977. And um, what's interesting is that no one, so a lot of, um, you know, a lot of co colonizing and things happen in uh, Africa, in the continent of Africa. And nobody actually wanted Botswana because uh, it looked like nothing. It was like, everybody was like, nah, nothing's going to happen with that. We're not going to prosper with that. They suck kind of thing. So they let them be. So then when they actually got their independence, they actually found diamonds there. And then uh, from there on out, yeah, the uh, <laughs> economy started rising up. And um, as I speak, uh, the economy is going up more and more. So I thank God that uh, no one, you know, colonized that um, and that they did see it as trash because as soon as that happened, they went up, you know. Mm -hmm. for, so praise God for that. Um, and it's very dry there, Buswana. Uh, I have a, I think, yeah, the video, the second video. This is what Buswana looks like. So way different, <laughs> Botswana looks like very dry, very uh, brown. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. And so I went with my school. I went on a service trip uh, with my school, alternative winter break, and um, we went for two weeks, pretty much. Uh, we went from the second all the way to the fifteenth before school started, and it was man, it was amazing. It really was amazing. Uh, definitely heartbreaking things. Um, definitely uh, victorious stories and miracle stories and things like that. Um, but I'm definitely grateful uh, for Henry and Beth Cruz, which is the people who actually gave me a full ride scholarship to go. Uh, they donated all the money for me to go. So I went for free, praise be to God. Um, to this one, right? um, and from the beginning of the year, I was gonna, I was on the track team for sports and I was gonna play football, all that stuff. And you know, I, I had to, like, like Jill said, I had to count the cost of things if I wanted to, you know, be on a track or a football field rather than being on campus doing ministry and these things, kind of things like that. And I decided to give up sports for this year. And if I if I hadn't, um, I would have missed out, right, on workouts. I would have missed out on track meets and all these things. And I wouldn't have been able to go to Africa. So the Lord knew what He was doing. I didn't know I was going to Africa until October. You know, and and God is God is good for that for sure. Um, so yeah, we went there. And when we went there, we worked with a, a nonprofit called Love Love Botswana, and those those people who run it, uh, Jerry and his wife, they actually from Texas. Um, what's interesting is that they're from Joel Osteen's church, so they knew Joel Osteen's parents, 
um, as they went up. And then 1986, that's when they started Love Buswana in, uh, in Buswana. And they said that their individual callings was to go to Africa. And then when they met and got married, they, um, they was married for a year, then they went to Africa. So that was pretty cool to hear. And they said that the Lord led them to somewhere where people don't want to go. And as I mentioned before, they didn't want Buswana because they looked at it as trash. It was nothing. Um, so they went there. And they started Love Buswana, the biggest nonprofit in Maun. Uh, Maun is the biggest uh, village in Botswana. And uh, when they did that, they have uh, orphanage, uh, they have schools, uh, they have uh, social workers, rehabilitation programs, they have uh, uh, mentorship programs, and things like that. And so we all broke up into those um, individual um, fields. And I went with the social workers. And social workers there, uh, very, it's, it's similar, but a little different um, with the settings of things. So the social workers there, they actually go to this thing called wards. Um, so it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, the village, and then it's a ward, right? So little wards in between, throughout the village of Maun. And when we went there, they would go and meet with community leaders and community um, individuals, right? And they would actually go there to um, this, you know, find out like what, what's been happening around the community, the issues, um, you know, things working with uh, the children and the children's rights they fight for. And they want to build uh, relationships with the, with the communities. They want student, I mean, um, children and parents to have a better relationship. So they go there and they listen to the issues that's been happening and they provide solutions, which is pretty cool. Um, they don't go there to just listen and just talk. They actually go there to provide solutions. They actually go there to do practical steps, um, such as uh, you know, pointing them to the government and, and giving them food and, and sitting down with them, getting to actually know them, um, to show that people haven't forgot about them and things like that. So these were the social workers did, and that's what I did. And what's interesting is that in Maun, in Muswan, there's no homelessness. None. There's no homelessness. On TV, it looks like it's homelessness, huh? But in Botswana, there's no homeless, not at all. And I was like, how, like, you know, how, where, where they at? You know, where everybody at? <laughs> um, and they said that the government actually provides shelter, food, water, wow. clothes, Christmas gifts. They provide all these different things uh, for everyone in Maun. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So um, before I went there, I didn't know what to expect. I had no clue what to expect. And I didn't even want to put together something to expect because I just didn't know. Uh, you know, you're taking somebody from the city of Rochester to a different continent. Like, that's crazy. You know, it was crazy to me. And um, when you go there, when you go to a different country in general, you see how American, Americanized, I don't know if yeah, that's yeah. the right word, but you, you see how much of an American you really are. And you go there with preconceived notions because of what you was taught here. And that's exactly what I did. So like I said, with homelessness and all that stuff, I'm like, oh my God, you know, there's no babies with ribs showing around here. Like, you know, that's what we see on commercials here in America. Mm -hmm. And as I was talking to people, they was like, nah, they said, of course, that's, you know, it's poverty and things like that. And it's anywhere in the world. And they said, but that's not majority of Africa. And I'm like, it's not, you know, no. Mm -hmm. And they're like, nah, you know, Africa is actually the richest continent. Like it has the richest ground there. They Oh, they got diamonds, they got all these different things. Um, so it's the richest co uh, continent. And as an American, I went there thinking, oh, they're poor, you know, they have this, they don't have that. And uh, I realized it's not, that's not actually true. Um, we, like this woman was speaking at the church and the church is huge there. It's like, it's, it's interesting because someone from, Afri uh, from America went there and built a church uh, and this actually reminds me of a mega church from here, you know. So even in that, coming to do ministry in there, there's still that, that American ideology of things. Um, even when you go there, and, and um, a couple people even seen that and realized that. So, uh, so yeah, you know that that was that. And you continue, you continue throughout the, the days and the weeks being there to to actually have your your ideas of what you thought it was to be broken, like literally shattered in your face, and it's like, wow, I feel stupid, you know, um, so this is one time, uh, their modesty is very important, 
And America clearly is not uh, at all. So uh, there, modesty is important. So um, they knew who we, they knew we wasn't from there, right? Because the first day we got there, uh, you know, women had, you know, tighter skirts, you know, whatever. It was nothing too revealing because they told us not to have things revealing, but it was just different. And they wore things different. And um, they told us that we couldn't wear certain things and, you know, we couldn't wear like the muscle shirts, right? And things like that. And uh, that kind of shattered another ideology of what we came from America with, uh, revealing things. And it's not, that, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that serious. But there it's very serious. And when you actually have things that's revealing, um, like men, a lot of the men actually was kind of creepy and was like, you know, catcalling and, you know, saying different things and giving little gestures and stuff like that um, to the women um, that came from our group. And it was it was just interesting to see, like, uh, how very different it was, how they dress, um, how they talk and interact with people. Here, you know, my biggest culture shock there was seeing an, uh, a black a black person, honestly, seeing a black person and walking past without Without them, I feel like I had to defend myself, like even just looking at them. I didn't feel that way there. Um, and I stared at someone for like five minutes because I was like, did I meet them yet? So, <laughs> and then I waved and they was just happy waving. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Or, you know, they was rolling up in the car. Um, they was beeping, they, hey, you know, whatever they were saying. And I'm like, wow, they mad cool. Like, you know, so uh, that was real cool to see, but it's just so different there. Um, and until you actually go there, there's really nothing I can say for you to actually understand that it's, it's different than what you've actually been taught. Um, you know, so when I went there and I, like I said, they're learning about the differences and all these things like that, the government and how people <coughs> interact, how they dress, how they talk, all these different things. Um, I started to think about America. You know, for example, their, their, their poverty is so different than us here. So there, they can't even find a pencil to write with. Right? Like kids can't even find, you know, pens to write with or paper to write on. Here, even if you're broke, like you can find a pencil or a pen. You can find different things um, to have in order to um, move forward with education and things like that. Even if you're broke, like even if you're poor. So the poverty is just so different there. Um, and uh, the social, um, like the office where they go and get, you know, it's kind of like welfare kind of thing here. Think of it like that, kind of. Um, but when you go there, they actually provide, they provide, like, they provide so much stuff that that to keep you from being homeless because, and their weather is beautiful. Their weather is beautiful, so it would make sense if it was homelessness. It wouldn't really be that bad because it's not that cold. You know, it was hundreds, nineties, things like that there, but it's dry heat, so that was that was too bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, they just they really care for people there. You know, they're. I guess the materialism and things like that, it don't really matter that much to them. Because they, those people who had houses, uh, huts, that wasn't, that had no ground, it had sand as a ground, they had one bedroom, um, one bed in there with four people living in there, they had their clothes on the ground in the sand, and you know, things like that, they had to carry water, because the water is, it's not something that's really easy to stomach, you gotta filter it and things like that. So, these are the people that had that stuff, and yet they still were so, joyful and in awe of life in general. Um, and as I make segue into that, uh, their faith was amazing. Their faith was so different than ours as an American as well. Their, their priorities were so different. Um, their first priority was faith. Even if they wasn't a Christ follower, they had faith that, that, they were, that God was, was there watching. You know, that God was there to provide, that God was there in their lives, even when they went through tough times or going through tough times, God is still there. And um, here in America, it seems as if we're like, yeah, God, yeah, okay, I got other stuff to do. I'm too busy. I got to go through this and that, right? But their priorities are so different. Even if, like I say, even if they're not Christ followers, they still want to talk to you about, about Christ, about Jesus, you know, and they say this thing called Pula. So Pula is money, they call it there. Um, but Pula means rain. And they're, like I said, it's very dry there, so uh, there's not that much rain going on there. But they ha they say that when in faith. They literally say Pula in faith, um, knowing that God will provide rain for them. Mm. You know, it's like even little stuff like that. It's like, wow, you know, their faith is just amazing. Um, their faith is also amazing. I seen when I went to the wards, like, 
They don't say, like in America, like here specifically, like in our in our lives right here, we say, can you pray for my, you know, just pray for my auntie, give me a prayer. You know, my leg hurt, give me a prayer. You know, I'm sick, give me a prayer. Nah, they don't say that. This is what they say. They say, hey, can you pray for healing right now for me? I'm like, <laughs> you know, they, they say stuff like that. Hey, can you pray for my aunt right here, right now? She needs healing, right, right here. Pray, pray for healing right now. And I'm like, wow, like, but here, we're like, here, yeah, keep me in prayer. There, they're like, come pray for her. Pray for her right now. Pray right now for me. Um, get this get this leg to be fixed right now. Like, they pray like that. They act for prayer like that. Um, and that's just amazing uh, to me to see and hear. And as I was going through there, um, our, our group, you know, we, we definitely learned throughout the past 13 days there um, about, like I said, us as an American, our ideology of things. And uh, we realized that we're actually privileged, even as, you know, if you're black, or, uh, Hispanic, you know, if you're poor, whatever, like we're still privileged compared to many places um, in the world in general. You know, they're, they're people, we talk so bad about America, which is true, we got, we got our flaws, of course we do. Um, but we talked so bad about America, they was like, I want to come to America. And we was like, nah, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to come here. They got this, that, and the third. We got Trump. We got this. We got, and, I, and they're still like, I don't care. I want to come. And I'm like, wow. Like, like we, we get so caught up with the norm of here that we get caught up in our problems and all these things like that. That we don't start, we don't see the solutions. We don't see the progress in things. And they're like, I don't care. I want to come, you know, mm. um, which is real cool to see. Um, so, also did we also did some fun stuff? You know, we went to Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe. We went uh, zip lining. Um, I don't have that on. It was mad fun. Like, you ever heard of Victoria Falls? Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the seven wonders of the world. Killing Niagara Falls. <laughs> Niagara Falls is like this to, to uh, Victoria Falls. It's 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 amazing for real. For real. It's beautiful. Um, I don't have other beer to drive. No, it's not. Either. It, it's beautiful. We can, we can, uh, you know, if afterwards we want to see pictures. It's crazy, um, but it's just so wonderful to see, man. And you know, we went on a safari, a back horse safari. Uh, you know, we saw different animals. Uh, we, when we was driving to Zambia, we saw lions and uh, the elephants, uh, giraffes, uh, zebras, all these you know, different type of deer and all this stuff. It was cool. Um, so we also let's see what else we did. Yeah, it was just a, it was a great time. Uh, everything dipped in there, like I said. It was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But when I was there, uh, I want to share this story real quick before I get into scripture. When I was there, uh, like faith played a big role. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect, uh, but I just had faith that God was there. Um, even before I went, uh, I was kept thinking about my family with my auntie being sick, and my cousin being in the hospital, and my family having so much drama that was happening. And the Lord was like, I got you. Don't worry about it. I want you to go there, not thinking about none of that. And I said, I know, but, you know, that's how our faith is sometimes in America. I know, but, and that's not faith, you know, that's that's doubt. And, um, you know, talking to my parents and all that stuff, and the Lord was like, I got you. And, I, and it was confirmation. I said, all right, you know, cool, cool. I'll let it go. Uh, so I went there, no service. It was beautiful. I, sometimes I just hate texting. I hate when people reach out to me. It sounds so bad. But I really just sometimes hate it because I just need my space. You feel me? Same. So, you know, I just wanted I just wanted to just be away, you know. So when I went there, it was beautiful. I had nobody to reach out and tell me the drama going on and all this. I was cool. Um, but when I got there, you know, we was in these little houses with the flies and it was mad bugs. Bugs was this big. Like, uh-huh. I stepped on an ant 17 times and didn't die. <laughs> dead, serious. dead serious. Like, it was crazy. Um... But I saw the Lord working, like, and I, I set goals, and let me read you some of these goals that I set before I went there. Um, I was like, I want to see this, I want to see this, and I said, uh, I'm excited to see the face of Jesus with the mission trip in Africa. I call it a mission trip. My mission was way different. Um, I want to see someone get saved and make an impact on campus. Um, I want to prepare, prepare to see the face of Jesus on campus. Uh, see miraculous signs and wonders, uh, and I put in parentheses healing. Uh, pray for my friend Adrian and bring him closer and back to Christ. Um, and a heart abandoned. Uh, so those are some of the things that I wanted to see on this uh, trip. 
And um, and this was this was the second day of us, the first day of us being there, right? So uh, we went to a prison, right? Prison system way different as well. Uh, we went to a prison. We had no guards around us. Like we was when we was walking up into this uh, this box, prison. Um, the inmates just in there. But it was worshiping and praising. No instruments. You know, they had no uh, cute things like the drum and the box drum and the microphone and this and that. They had none of that. They had their hands and their voices. They were singing in their languages. They were singing in English. Um, and it was just so beautiful to see. Like, it was these people who were locked up for however many years doing for whatever they did. Um, but it was in there. And they was praising God and worshiping. Uh, they, not all of them was Christian. Uh, so, Pastor Fila, which is uh, the past one of the pastors there at La Buswana, uh he went there. He's the he's the um, past the pastor for uh, you know prisons. And when he was speaking, and he asked us if we wanted to share anything, right? So they asked us pre um, previously to that, and the Lord put something on my heart, and I shared uh, about how Jesus says, "Come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened, for I'll give you rest." And I shared about. Uh, like how I've been, how I've been learning, um, you know, through my mentor and through the word about like being, you know, st stuck in prison in our minds. And I shared about that. And I shared about my experiences with, with uh, incarceration with my dad and my brother and my uncle and me even getting put in cop cars, you know, when I was younger, you know. And, and I shared about how like I had to reevaluate my life, like for real, for real, before I end up, you know, in prison physically. But it started in my mind and my heart. And I shared about that, I had a translator, it was it was amazing, you know, and you know, they went on, people were sharing and singing. And then at the end, they they said that Pastor Fila said that that was the most conversions um, that they ever seen there. It was nine conversions. It was nine people who said yes to Jesus um, that day, praise be to God. And um, he said it was like it was history. That's what he called it. He said it was history, like to um, to see that many people accept Jesus in it, um, in the prison. Um, during one session, and like I said, we they lined, we lined up. They shook our hands, you know, looking at us as Americans. It was like amazing for us to, for us to be there with them, kind of thing. No guards, no guns, none of that. Uh, people, inmates, were just chilling outside, um, just dirt everywhere. It was just, it was cool. Like it was cool. You didn't have no pressure of feeling, you know, anything. Like it was, it was, it was real cool to see. Um, and then when we went to different wards. So, okay, so, you know, we gave food and water and all this stuff like that. The woman came, um, that the, the two, it was two women who came, they were social workers with us. And it was about five of us um, from Wagner. And when we went to the ward, uh, you know, we chilled with them, we spent time with them. And they, at the end, they asked a prayer request, right? So it's a Christian organization. They asked a prayer request, and, excuse me, and then a woman said, you know, she was like, before this, before this, I, I, I get excited about this part, like, <laughs> for real, for real. So, Take your time. okay, so I was up there, I was in there, we was in a circle, and for some reason, when it was talking, my stomach got hurt. I was like, ooh, you know, like, dang, man, did I eat something wrong? You know, the food was good, by the way, magnet. Uh, they eat a lot of beef, they eat a lot of beef. Um, so I'm like, dang, so I went to this lady named Michelle, this woman of God, and uh, she's, a, she's a professor at our, at our school, and I said, listen, you out of all people in this circle will understand what I'm about to tell you. I said, okay. I said, listen, I feel like the Lord is calling me to heal this woman right now in the name of Jesus. And she was like, okay, okay, hold on. She's like, she's like, listen, go do it. Right? As soon as I said that, like two seconds later, it was like, oh yeah, she wants healing for her leg. And I said, all right. So I got, I just walked over and faith, man, I got on my knee and her knees, her legs was like, so they was like knots on each side like this, right? This big, literally. And her, her feet had was numb and things like that. And I don't know, I just got down. I just started praying, man. I put my hands on the legs. It felt weird. Like it was, it was big. It, was, it felt weird for real, for real. But I'm just like, Lord, like, oh my goodness. I, I was, I don't know. I can't remember what I was saying. But I would, and then as I was praying, uh, the, the, the knots on her knees started doing this and going down literally like that. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was saying this out loud, oh my God. Like, I'm shaking, just thinking about it. 
And uh, I'm like, this is so crazy, Lord. But Lord, bring healing in the name. You know, and I just kept saying the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. And, um, you know, the swelling went down. And then after that, that took a while. Like, I, I don't know. I just poured out for real, for real. And the lady, her aunt next to her, uh, oh, she had a crutch too. And her aunt next to her uh, was like, can you pray, you know, can you pray for my chest and my right side of numbness? I said, okay. Got down. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. You know, whatever I was saying. And, um, you know, that happened. I asked her, could she come up and walk with me? And uh, to fast forward all of this with them too, uh, they had partial healing. So the woman needs, the swelling went down, um, and the other woman felt better. And they both felt better. The woman with, that was walking with the crutch, she was walking, but it was a little unstable, but she was walking. And they both said that they believe, and they believe their faith is going gonna, is gonna to heal them. So there was partial credit there, partial credit, partial healing there. And then, uh, and I, I was drained. I got in the van. I was like, oh. I thought we was going back home, like, to go shower and just, you know, chill. But it was like, oh, yeah, we got three, we got three more, four more. I was like, dang. So, you know, I went there. We did that. And then every time I got off for each one, every time I got off the uh, the, the bus and it was actually a prayer, they looked to me like it was crazy. And it was like, you know, come pray for healing. But it, and I was like, okay. You know, <laughs> and when I went, and then um, we fast forward. So each time was partial healing. Praise God. It was crazy. Partial healing. And the last time I was in the van, we was going to the last one. I said, I said, God, I believe you going, I believe you can heal someone fully in the name of Jesus. You can do it. I know you could. And I was praying that. And uh, you know, again, that's what I believed in the beginning. And when we went to the last one, uh, the woman, you know, we sent with her her uh, her uh, niece and her uh, daughter. And Afterwards, we was talking with them. We said, you know, any prayer requests? And she was like, yeah, you know, my shoulder and my legs, they hurt so bad. You know, she can't really walk, things like that. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. She looked at me, and I said, Lord, you know, whatever I was saying. And then uh, I was like, can you stand up? So she stood up, right? And then I just stood there for a little bit. I forgot I froze, got dying a lot. And I was like, like how does she feel? And the translator, you know, and she said she was still in pain. So I said, you can sit down. The Lord said, keep praying. I said, all right. So I got down, and um, what's the song called? Uh, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. The blood of, you know that song? <laughs> yeah, so those lyrics came to me, and I was just saying that. And I said, if you're a Christian, I said, See, keep saying in the name of Jesus, be healed. And I, t and I invited people around me as well, um, as I did throughout the past uh, other four. And, you know, that happened. And the woman, and after that, whatever, I said, oh, God, you can do it, blah, so I said, can I, you know, she started like moving her legs. She was sitting down and she was like, started like doing this, right? And I'm like, okay, you know. So I'm like, I'm like, listen, can I, I just need two steps. That's all I need is two steps. And then, so she got up, right? Her knees cracked. So then I started walking with her like this. And I was like, she started walking and walking. I'm like, oh, shoot. I had to speed up and I'm like, like, okay, you know, like, I didn't know, really know her history of things. So then the woman couldn't look up at me. Like, she was like this, you know, and her, her uh, daughter and her niece was like, just like that. And I'm like, I'm like, what? what? You know, what's she saying? Like, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't understand her. And the translator was like, this is the first time she could walk in, in many years. Uh, and she needed that cane and all this stuff. And this woman was fully healed in the name of Jesus on the spot. In the name of Jesus. That's crazy. Like, I seen this woman literally cut and walk to walk in faster than me. And I'm like, oh, okay. And everybody was in awe. You know, and there was people from my group that went in the van that didn't even see it because they was like, you know, hey, you know, bye. And there was a couple people there, and the professors and the students, it was people who can attest to this that Jesus brought full healing to this woman of walking. Um, I'm a spot in, in my face, like, and I was like, wow. You know, I try to keep the gun. I'm like, oh, man. You know, I'm excited. Like, And the Lord reminded me that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That healing really takes place to this day. Like, Jesus really physically and, and mentally and spiritually healed. In the name of Jesus, he heals. For real, for real. Like, I saw this in my eyes. The Lord used me. I'm so grateful. I can't believe the Lord used me to do that. You feel me? And um, I guess I learned, like, through that. 
one of the one of the wars we went to, the man came to us was like, you know, please bring healing, you know, pray for healing for my toe, da da da. And the man's heart wasn't in, in the right spot. And the Lord told me that. He said, Don't pray for him. And I said, Dang, okay. <laughs> you know, but his heart was, you know, give me money, give me something, I need something, I need this and that. He was and he was drunk too. Um, and the Lord said, I want to teach you that faith actually matters. Like, and many times we can be like that. We can come to God and say, hey, I want this, I want that, da 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 And it looks cute, like, you know, heal me. But it's like we have a different motive to it. Heal me so I can do this. Heal me so I can do that. Give me this so I can do that. And it's about us. When we come to God, we want provision, right? We don't want to actually live our lives for Christ in our hearts. We want actually provision through that. And we have a different motive. And Jesus is saying, I want to heal you physically. I want to heal you fully. But I can't because your faith is not right. Your faith is in your heart is not correct. We are walking by sight, not by faith. And that's what, that's what happens in America. That's what happens in Rochester. That's what happened in New York City. We walk by sight and not by faith. That's why you see so much riots. That's why you see so much division because we walk by sight rather than faith. And when faith don't have a part in our lives, we continue to get caught up in what we see. We continue to get caught up in what our friends are yelling. We continue to get caught up on Facebook. We continue to get caught up in all this stuff when there's no healing that's happening. There's no provision. There's none of that because our faith is not actually being active. We're not being proactive because we, we serve a proactive God. We're being reactive as everybody else. And as Christians, when we are Christ followers, we don't live like that. Not because I said it, because God said it in his word. It is impossible to please God without faith. And that's exactly what the Israelites did. The Israelites always, like, was, they was worshiping God and then they would go somewhere else, right? We're worshiping God. Oh, we got to go somewhere else. Worshiping God goes insanity. Continue to do the same thing over and over, expecting different results. That's exactly what they did. And in 1 Samuel, uh, they demanded a king, right? Not a king, but a physical king. Because they already had a king, which was God. And they missed it. They missed it. Because they was afraid. They was afraid of, of uh, the wars that was coming at them and all this stuff. So they was like, we need a, we need a, we need a king like everybody else. And they said that. They said, we want a king like everybody else. This is what it says in 1 Samuel. It says this. This is crazy, y'all. I'm telling you. This is crazy. And it says this. 1 Samuel 8, uh, 6, 8. I mean, I'm sorry. Chapter 8, verse 4. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint us a king to judge us like all the nations. Isn't it interesting how we make excuses up so that we can get what we want? Mm. Right? We go to God for these excuses. Well, you know, uh, your, your, your kids, you're old. Your, your kids, um, not even following you, you're old. We, let, give us like everybody else. Give us something like everybody else. Right? And we go to God with, this, with these excuses to not fully serve him. We go to God so that we can get what we want, thinking that we trick God's mind or something like that. You know, and that's exactly what they did. And Samuel was, he was, you know, he didn't feel good about it, you know. And the Lord said in verse 7, he says, Obey the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. So, um, as I look at that, and they continue, and the Lord says, warn them. And the Lord warned them, and, you know, the king that they was going to have, which was Saul, by the way, um, you know, he was going to bring war, and. He was going to bring the kids into war and, and take land and do all these kinds of things like that. Um, and he was, and this, is, this is what it says in verse 19. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but there shall be a king over us that we also may be like all the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. There's, a, there's always a motive to what we're asking for with God. And if our motive is not pure... We get caught up in what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. right? Just like in, a, in America, we get caught up in what everybody else is doing, Christians included. We get caught up. We get caught up. And um, and I'm like, and I kept asking these questions like, dang, why Saul? Like, why Saul? Why did God choose Saul, you know? And I, I really don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. Um, it's just like, 
Based on this scripture, it talks. It says that you know he's handsome, uh, he's tall. You know his family has money, um, and that's pretty much uh, that's all I've, I've seen of why he chose Saul. Uh, but then I'm like, why though? And as you continue to read, like this is what the people desired. They wanted something, but they wanted somebody who looks good. They wanted to live by sight. They wanted to see someone who's tall, who's handsome, who's you know this or that that looks good. Yet he disobeyed God, yet he went against God, all these different things. And um, that's where their heart was at. And um, in, in chapter 16, uh, verse 7, um, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. The Lord looks on the heart. That is faith. That is faith. We walk by sight sometimes, a lot of times. A lot of times. And when I went to Buswana, I realized that I don't have to walk like that. That those, that many of them there, don't, they, if they went by what they see, they would be, they would be defeated. They would, they would want to give up on life, for real, for real. But they don't walk like that. They walk by faith. They really do. As I even said with the prayers, they don't pray um, that you just do it. They actually write them a spot to do it because they have faith in that. They don't believe in what they see. They believe in what who they believe in. And that's that's something that I want to bring us um, tonight is that let's stop living by sight but by faith. You know when that when the gun the gunman um, happened with in Florida, uh, I kept seeing thoughts and prayers don't work. Policy works. There's many arguments I could come back with that. But for the sake of time and for the sake of the gospel, that's not true. Prayer works. Because prayer leads to action. We as an Americans think prayer is just sit down and just, oh, hallelujah. You know. <laughs> but actually, prayer leads to, it leads to action. Right. It leads to action. Mm -hmm. So, one, don't give up on prayer. Don't think you got to go, go to riots and marches and all this stuff because none of that lasts. Many of these things are trends. If we think about it, many of these things are trends. Like what Jill said, accounting the cost of things. Many of them who are, many of people who are caught up in, in what the world says, right, without moving by faith or by sight, they won't take a pay, a pay cut. They won't go to certain places. They just want to yell and talk because of my sight. They go, go by what they see. But faith plays a huger role. Faith is a spiritual thing. We don't we have faith in what we see rather than who is not seen. And tonight I I, I want to encourage us that um, like I saw in Buswana, like I see in many of us as believers, um, and let's let's live by faith. Let's not ask for a, a, a king that, that we can see that looks good. Because truly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set us up for failure. It's not going to get us nowhere. Um, but I actually live by faith, by what God calls us to do, and to please Him. Um, and not get caught up with our circumstances, the situations happening. Don't panic. God is not a God of, of, of confusion, but of clarity. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what happened in Africa. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I really want us to think about that. Um, if we just bow our heads for uh, real quick, just reflect, just reflect who you are right now. Not who you were, not who you're going to become. Who you are right now. How are you living? Are you living by what we see? By what you feel? By what you think? Are you living by faith? And who you believe in, who you say you follow? How are you living? Faith or sight? How are you living? I believe there's two groups tonight. Um, I believe there's one group that are believers, that are Christians, like fully hearted Christians. 
Yet there are things happening right now in our lives, in our families, in our friend group, our workplace, and in America in general. We've, we've gotten caught up in that. We became like everybody else we see that's not living by faith. And there's another group who actually not even fully a Christian. That's not even a fully a Christ follower in their hearts. But they went by what they see with their families, right, with the religion aspect of things. But they actually didn't accept the faith in their hearts of who Jesus is. And tonight is a, is a, it's a perfect night because it's God's timing to accept who Jesus is in faith. To understand that even if you see things that don't look good or don't feel good, that Jesus is still there and that he's still the king of kings. Uh, so for the first group, if you are a full, full Christ follower, Yet, you've gotten caught up, whether it be a day, a week, a month, past few months, a year, whatever it is. If that's you, tonight is a night to repent and turn from that and remember who you believe in and walk by faith. And if that's you, uh, with all eyes closed, all heads bowed, I just want to see your hand. If that's you and it's time to repent tonight, uh, raise it high for me so I can see who you are. That's you. Raise that hand up. Not unto Darius, but unto God. Uh, Jesus, I just want to pray for this group right here. Father God, those who raise their hands. And it's a time to repent, Father God. That there's no condemnation in you, Jesus. And that tonight, that we leave differently because we've responded to your call, God. To... to Shift our minds, to, to shift our hearts back to you, Jesus. That we walk by faith, not by sight. Let us no longer take those steps before you, God. But actually follow you because you know what you're doing. And God, I pray for every single one who raised their hands, Father God, that you protect them. That you guide them, you lead them, God. And we continue to put our eyes and our minds and our hearts to who you are, Jesus. And who you say you are in your word. And there's a second group in here who's seen the religion aspect, who's seen even the hurt with the religion aspect, who's seen their parents and grew up in the church and all these kinds of things, yet maybe you haven't fully accepted who God is and faith in your hearts yet because you went by what you've seen in the religion. So tonight, with no one looking, if that's you, and tonight is the night to respond to the call of God, if that's you, you can raise your hand. Raise your hand. Amen. Father God, I just pray for those who, who raise their hands, Father God, who's willing and ready to accept your goodness and your love, Jesus, your compassion, your grace, your truth, and your mercy, Father God. Thank you that you're no longer, you're, you're never in a box of religion, Father God, but you are who you are. And God, I thank you for the call and the response that you're a proactive God. That we can fully put our hearts in you in faith, Jesus. And I thank you so much, God, as you, you open your arms up to us. Even if we've been walking for so long, living by what we've seen of religion, Father God. And I thank you that we have the relationship with you now. Thank you, Jesus. And Father God, I pray for everybody else who didn't raise their hand. That in their hearts, Father God, they understand that you love them. You call them by name. And that faith matters. Prayer matters. Reading the word matters, God. Let us all, including myself, leave here understanding and knowing that faith is important and that faith pleases you. And that no matter what we see in our country, in our world, Father God, you are still on the throne, that you remain on the throne, and no one can take that from you. And we have victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. So uh, to all y'all who responded, man, praise God. When you respond to the Lord, uh, it's important to take those steps um, that's necessary, those practical steps um, of reading the word, praying, uh, surrounding yourself with the things that, that God wants you to do, surround yourself with, watching the things that God wants you to watch, and listening to the things that God wants you to listen to. Um, I love you all. I'm grateful every time to see y'all, and I pray that uh, we leave here really transformed in our hearts of faith. Um, so God bless you. Thank you. So, I don't know if you know me and uh, Darius' story, but I saw him 
he was about a junior, maybe sophomore in high school. Sophomore, he's a real hyped kid, very, very annoying. <laughs> um, and he was rapping, and he was annoying, and someone rap again, and it's even more annoying. So I took him home, and I was telling him the difference, you know, but you know, he was young. So then that summer, um, this was right before, right before I got married, um, I called him and I said, hey, I'm about to do a song for my wife. Well, I'm about to, do, I'm about to go to the studio. I didn't tell him I was doing a song for her. So he came down to the studio and I did this stuff on purpose because I wanted him to see something. Um, went to the hospital, did this, this rap commercial for General House. General House, that's what it's called, the street, right? Important. So I wanted him to see something. So later that year, not later in the year, probably right after I got married, but right before I got married, um, I asked him if he wanted to minister. And, you know, he was young and hype. And he was like, yeah, 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 what, how many songs you want me to do? I said, just come down here and be ready. So he came down and he was like, so what I'm going to do? I said, um, move the tables because <laughs> you got to, um, you know, they about to get ready to feed people in the neighborhood. And he kind of looked kind of shy. I didn't help, you know. <laughs> I went back upstairs. And, but with that being said, I had no idea that it was going to birth what he just talked about. Um, of, you know, the importance of, you know, doing something different. You might see, you know, it's not, it may, it may be not as big as going to Africa or Australia or Haiti or whatever, but if it's something like what, you know, Jill does at the House of Mercy, House of Mercy or is it something you may be able to do at your school? God sees the big picture and a seed being planted. So two things, allow a seed to be planted in you and allow someone to water that seed. Um, so throughout the years up until now, you know, it was like, you know, he'll always ask me a bunch of questions and I give him answers. So then I started telling him, I wouldn't answer him. I say, talk to God. <laughs> and he was like, but I need to know. I said, well, he'll give you a better answer than I could. And he just keeps sending it, so I, I stopped answering. Um, but I have no idea it was going to end up to him actually talking to God in Africa to heal someone. Um, so it's not like God called him out to do something any more special than anyone in here can do. What you heard came from someone who put away everything and said, listen, if moving the table is going to get me closer to Jesus, that's the only thing that matters. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's good to see him up here, me knowing him for as long as I've known him for, and seeing the, the spiritual growth and the things he walked away from, from the football stuff, um, the track stuff, the, all the stuff he was just bothering me about, and I wouldn't even answer him, um, to hear him trust God. So, as he said, faith matters. The faith isn't so much of, you know, if God can heal someone. The faith is, do you believe God is going to speak to you back? That's the faith that counts. When you, when you speak to God, do you believe he's going to speak to him back, speak to you back? And what he did, it was like, I'm going to talk to God, and he's going to respond. That's the faith that matters. So, I know he's going back to New York. I don't know if any of you guys are going to see him between there. He's going back to New York on Saturday. The next time he'll be back here, I don't know, he'll be out of school, I'm assuming. Uh, Easter and then he'll be yeah. um, He'll be graduating. So, uh, um, so let's uh, pray for him. You know, if you guys want to come and lay hands on him and all that good stuff, he can step down. And as a friend, if anybody wants to say anything as far as praying for me, things like that. Um, and Father God, thank you for the, the journey that you were on. You put Darius on, uh, just being a light to his family. A light to you and a light to his family, first and foremost, Father God, that um, his transparency to be close to you, not to be honest with others, but to be honest with you is what matters. And no matter what his you know, biological family has to say, they can't ignore it. Um, they, they can't ignore your light. It's hard for us to ignore a light bulb light, and your light shines brighter than that. So, Father God, um, I just pray that um, it continues to shine brighter and brighter, even for his brothers, that they can realize, you know, you can go left or right. Um, I pray that for these last uh, few months, Father God, that he, um, he stays focused on you, Lord. Uh, that he can see the temptation coming from a mile away, um, Father God, and, um, and you continue to send him back to these other countries, Father God, not for his heart to be broken, but for his heart to be restored, uh, Father God, and um, 
People who say that he's driving backwards, uh, taking a bus back, and uh, help him keep his eyes and ears open to the, the 16 year old Darius that's out there with a bunch of questions that's, that's still trying to find direction. Father God, give him uh, the patience, show him he has the patience, show him he has the words uh, to uh, uh, lead these folks. In, in Jesus' name. Anybody want to pray? Thank you for the time. Thank you for the testimonies. And uh, just pray that you continue to make things clear for him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one last thing. One last thing. If, if any of the, the young ladies are leaving, just make sure y'all walk out with somebody. Um, don't just get up and bounce. Just um, make sure there's a guy or another female walking with you. We go outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.